And we need to make sure that we listen and read about the Hajj, read people's stories about the Hajj, read things about the Hajj, to motivate ourselves, to prepare ourselves. You know, it's, this is, I'm telling you, this is not a journey, this is not a vacation. Right? Uh, Mina, Arafat, I'm telling you, I was mentioning in the khutbah yesterday, I was, at a, I was at a travel agent's office not too long ago, maybe two, three weeks ago. And, um, you know, a very, very happy, very nice person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. He goes, Shaykh, Shaykh. I said, what? So he goes in his file, pulls out this really nice color flyer. This is what we have in Arafat and Muzdalifah this year. You know, I mean, Arafat and Mina this year. And, and, and I'm looking at it, and wallahi, I saw sofas and rugs. I mean, I have done the Hajj, I have seen the sofas and rugs. But uh, subhanallah, I was just, you know, I was thinking to myself that for a person who does this hajj, he better be praying to Allah every second that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted because of all the luxuries that that person is getting. Right? Not, not too long ago, ten, ask someone, ask someone who, who went to hajj maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago. We don't even need to go back a half a century. I wouldn't even say go back a quarter century. 10, 15 years ago and ask them what they went through when they went for hajj. Right? Really, find someone who went to Hajj that you know 10-15 years ago and ask them their experiences. What was the Haram like? Um, how did you do the Hajj? How did you go to Mina? How did you go to Arafat? What did you do in Muzdalifah? Ask them these questions. Because when they tell you all these things, you will be prepared for it. When you go there and you see these things, you will feel that you're really it's really much, much better than what it was 10, 15 years ago. So let us, you know, let us prepare ourselves and brace ourselves for this great trip. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. And the one thing that I always mention, no matter what happens, when we return from Hajj, there should only be good coming out of our mouths. Our tongues should only be speaking of the good that we saw, of the good that we did. If there was anything that happened to you which was not right, if you saw something which was not correct, if something happened to you that you did not like, make it a point that you're not going to tell anyone about it. You're not going to tell anyone about it. One example. The Shaykh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him, Shaykh Salim Dhurat from England, uh, through whose cassettes I have benefited very much in preparing for the Hajj and these classes, he says that his father always used to say something. And that was that when you are a guest, your host takes care of you. So you call your cousin, your friend, you go somewhere. You're the guest, that person is the host. They take care of you. They make sure they pick you up at the airport, they make sure they ride you home, they give you dinner, they give you a room in their house. If there's no room in their house, they book a hotel, whatnot. So the host takes care of you. Now after doing all this, let's say you go back to your home. That person took, you know, he, he, took, pri he took pride in, you know, serving you, in, in doing everything for you. And after you came back home, you started to tell other people that, no, you know, it wasn't good, the room was not good, the food was no good. Will that person ever invite you back if he finds out? No, I don't think so. In our case, Al-Hujjaju Dhuyufur Rahman The Hujjaj, the people who perform the Hajj Are the guests of Ar-Rahman Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So we are the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our host Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of us And this is what should be in our hearts It is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It is the sacred mosques It is the sacred land There is no way we could never mind speak of evil But we could even you know, think evil of those lands, of those places No matter what our experiences may be Let us all come back We haven't even been there yet But let us all come back With that feeling in our heart only thinking and speaking of the good that happened to us. Insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will invite us over and over. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will invite us over and over. There are many people who have, you know, who have some rough experiences. But if you're only speaking of your rough experiences, if you're only speaking of the evil that you happened to you, because believe it or not, when many people come back, they don't, you know, they very seldomly, I mean, many people do speak about all the good that happens, but immediately, one of the things that they remember is the evil that happened to them. You know, the things that went wrong. And immediately they start telling other people. 
So believe it or not, many people come back with more bad memories than good memories. So let us all make a point and make the intention that we, no matter what happens to us, we will return insha'Allah with good memories and we should put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? If we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for us. And at the same time, think of it as a pilgrimage, as the hajj. So no matter what happens wrong, you're going to go along with it. Don't complain. Whatever happens, I mean, the world could turn around. Right, the world could turn around. I remember a very... We were in Arafat. The food was delivered to us. But it was one hour late. So a few people began to scream and say, Where's the food? I'm hungry. I said, My dear friends, we have, you know, we've been eating all our lives. We will eat all our lives. The day of Arafah, the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins, you're worried about air conditioners, you're worried about food, and you're worried about toilets, you're worried about sofas. I mean, how could you even think of these things? Right? A mu'min can't even think of these things. On the day of Arafah, that person should you know, remind himself of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So never mind, the food came, we ate. And obviously, we as Americans like to waste our food. So there was a lot of leftovers. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless a few brothers here from Santa Clara. They, they gathered the food that, you know, they took someone's bread, someone's jam, rice. They put it all together. And there were about three nice, you know, boxes. So uh, myself and these two brothers, we took the boxes. And, you know, we were kind of like in a closed area. You know, there was a gate outside and people couldn't come in. So we were kind of walking outside and there's people looking at us. As soon as we opened those gates... And we walked out with the food. Before you know it, there were people jumping all over us for that food. I mean, we literally were beneath these people. I mean, you know, I was telling myself, I shouldn't have come with, you know, you're telling yourself that you're coming with the food. And, but the people, they, there's no food out there. There's people jumping to grab whatever they can from you. And here we're complaining about our food. And we don't even see these things. The bus driver puts us in an air-conditioned bus, we go to sleep, we arrive in Arafat, we wake up, we walk inside our tents, and we don't walk out until they tell us to go back out again. So what's happening outside to all the other people, we don't even see that stuff. And we need to make sure that we look around us. We're, we're, we complain about our toilets in Arafat and, and Mina. And there's people... You know, we, we've got air conditioners. You know, you turn one button on and, and the air conditioner turns on. It's nice, cool. You know, your travel agent has got a nice can of, you know, a big can with ice inside it with all these drinks so you can drink what you want. <coughs> Step outside for a second though. Look at those people from India, Pakistan, from Africa who are sitting underneath their umbrellas. There's no tents for them. They've got a bed sheet that they've kind of put up two, three sticks, kind of, you know, and they're sitting underneath it. Or there's an umbrella. That's how they spend their days in Mina. So you and I have no right to complain whatsoever. There's no way we can even think of these things. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us.